Hi, I'm Alf Hoonboy. In this paper, I argue that most modern people live with a cultural illusion about what technology really is. The mainstream view seems to be that technology is essentially a product of new discoveries and inventions. But I'm arguing that it's simultaneously a social strategy for displacing work and environmental burdens onto other populations that we think of as less developed. The notion of technological progress is an article of faith for all major ideologies like neoliberalism, Marxism, and environmentalism. I'm arguing that technology is a cultural category that's been resorted to ever since the Industrial Revolution as a way to solve problems of sustainability. But this has generally meant saving time and space in the core of the world system at the expense of human time and natural space in the periphery. Technology, in other words, is fundamentally about redistributing time and space in global society. We tend to think of technologies as productive in themselves, as if they were independent of the unequal global flows of resources that keep them operating. I call this machine fetishism. Even Karl Marx must have suffered from it. How could he be optimistic about the new fossil fuel based technologies that were being developed in 19th century capitalist Europe? Once capital accumulation congealed into technology, it seems, it became exempt from political critique. Like most of us to this day, Marx was constrained by what is often referred to as Cartesian dualism, our tendency to think of material objects as distinct from social relations. Such a rigid dichotomy of nature versus society is now being transcended by philosophers such as Bruno Latour. But if Marx would have needed the insights of Latour, the opposite is also true. Latour's deliberations seem not to be concerned with justice, power, and inequalities. Like his contemporaries, Marx was unable to see that steam engines were contingent on the unequal exchange of embodied slave labor and degraded land in colonial cotton plantations. And we continue to think of machines as empowered by their intrinsic, almost magical properties deriving from human ingenuity. But ingenuity is only a necessary condition for the emergence of new technologies, not a sufficient condition. Machines not only have to be technically feasible, but also socially or economically feasible. This means that they have to be aligned with the highly uneven market prices of labor and land in different parts of the world system and with the purchasing power of potential consumers. Investments in technology are rational when they cost less than the labor they displace and when sufficiently affluent consumers can be found. 
And this, in turn, hinges on the relative prices of labor and land in the world system. Technology, in other words, is an intrinsically social phenomenon. It is not simply a relation between humans and their natural environment, but more fundamentally, a way of organizing global human society. It is the central fetish of capitalism.